Hey everyone, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and uh, I am thrilled to be with everyone behind something you said last night here in the Toronto, in our studio at Toronto. Um, first of all, congratulations on being part of the Toronto Film Festival. I, I, I'm so curious what it means to you guys to be part of this fest, because for me, it's my favorite festival that I, it, I love this place. And can you sort of talk about what it means? Yeah, I mean... So for me, the festival is, uh, it's kind of a full circle moment for me. I used to actually work at the festival as an usher, ripping tickets, sweeping popcorn. And yesterday when we premiered our film, that was the very theater I used to clean just a couple of years ago. So for me, it feels really good to be back with a film. I'm actually going to stop there for just real quick because I realized everyone watching this interview will not have seen the movie yet, or almost everyone. And I hate asking that generic question, but... Who wants to bite the bullet and say how they've been describing the film to friends and family? Uh, yeah, something you said last night follows uh, a woman on vacation with her parents and teenage sister. And it's a story about family at the end of the day. And the woman is trans, but it's not the central point of the story. She's a sister. She's a daughter. She's a granddaughter first. And she's trans second. One of the things that really struck me about the film was the fact that it, it's a different kind of story than I expected. It's about a loving family, a very supportive family. And I, I was waiting for the, like, and I don't want to do any spoilers, but I was waiting for like a shoe to drop because that's what I'm used to in these kinds of stories. And, and instead, it's just a really loving, supporting family. And can you sort of talk about that aspect in, 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 for all of you? Anyone want to go? I can take that. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I think it's such a beautiful story um, because it is such a rare story for trans people to see. Um, meeting Louise, I got to witness how her family is so supportive of her and her career, and that really changed my life. And I think it's gonna be really awesome for so many trans people to see this kind of story, um, a story where being trans is not the central uh, conflict within the family, um, so that we can kind of, s s everyone can relate to this film. Uh, whether you're trans or not, because we all have a family. I'm so curious with the casting process because you've never been in a movie as far as I know. This is, and you're in, I mean, all the scenes, you know? So talk a little bit about the casting process and um, let's just, let me start with that. Yeah, so when it came to Renata, who's the main character of something you said last night, um, we ran acting workshops rather than doing the traditional audition pro process just because I knew that most likely it was going to be a girl who didn't have a lot of acting experience. And the audition, the, the typical audition format can be quite overwhelming and quite abrasive, I think, if you're not used to doing that. Um, so we ran acting workshops that were kind of like drama classes and I invited different girls from the community to come out and take them with us. And we had done a couple of those and I still hadn't found like our girl yet. And then it's always a question of everyone's always like, how did you find Carmen? But in the end, it was kind of like Carmen found us. A friend of mine uh, came home one day and she was like, I found the girl. I know this is your girl. Uh, she walked into my work and like, you need to meet her. And then about a week later, we met up. I gave her a scene to read without any context. And she knocked it out of the park. Like, I, it was like magic watching her read that scene with no context. Like, I didn't tell her about the story. I didn't tell her like what happens before the scene after the scene she just knew and Carmen has this quality of um intrinsically understanding the power of silence which was really important to me in casting this character she really understands that uh just because someone's not speaking it doesn't mean they're not saying anything Ren says quite a lot in her choice not to speak a lot of the times and Carmen nailed that 100 percent and in terms of Miss Page over here, uh, I think uh, Sienna was one of the hardest characters to cast just because we needed someone who uh, was quite bratty, but also quite likable. And uh, I think you encompass that very well, Thanks, Paige. <laughs> <laughs> and also Paige, just like, you never shirked at the idea of like, getting ugly or being silly or doing all the ridiculous things I made you do. Like you were always like, okay, yes and, yes, yes and. Come on, improv. Um, 
for my audition process, I submitted my tape thinking I butchered the audition. And I was like, okay, well, I'm never going to hear from that again. Let's just continue on. And then I got an email back. Then I got another email back. And then I had a chemistry read. And then I met with Luis. And then we went right into filming. So for me, it was wild because I thought I was never going to hear from that again. Luckily, I did. And playing Sienna was so fun and unique. I had a difficult time trying to figure out how I wanted to play Sienna because she could be bratty, but you don't want people to only think of somebody as a characteristic as yourself. You want to see them as a person. So I wanted to find the simplicity and kindness and the sister love within Sienna and also the power in silence and just listening and Carmen made it excellent just to act with. We just locked eyes and we connected and it was wonderful. One of the things that uh, I really enjoyed is that, and it's hard to do with film is making it sort of feel like authentic and natural in the moment where you're not watching something scripted more like the cameras, the fly on the wall, and you're just watching these moments. So can you sort of talk about for all three of you, like pulling that off and when you felt like you had it or you know what I mean, being authentic in the moment? For me, um, coming into acting, I really always thought acting was putting on these layers of a character. Um, I worked with a, an amazing acting coach, Vivian, that Louise introduced me to. And um, over the past year, I've really learned to just be a more authentic version of myself with her, learning how to strip away these layers of characters that we put on every day so that you can really show up authentically and not worry about how you're going to be seen on the screen. So for me, um, just having so much time to prepare and do that work, um, to practice being more authentic in your actual life as a trans person is a really hard thing to do sometimes. Uh, but doing that made it a lot easier once we got to set to really allow that authenticity and vulnerability to show through a little bit. I also think it was amazing because we did shoot on film. So you're limited with film. You can't do 12 takes of a five minute scene. So we rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed. And we went the weekend before just the cast and we rehearsed every scene. We did connections. We, we just bonded like that. So having the time to rehearse, I felt more confident going into it. And I knew that we could all do it because we practiced, because we had rehearsal time. It is, it's so important to have that first initial spark with everybody and the connection. And I also think in modern day cinema now, there's a lot of action movies and car crashes and these crazy fight scenes. And great, cool, but... I think the future of cinema is here and being able to just sit and watch something that is so authentic and so calm and beautiful and so much happening within so little words is the most unique piece of cinema that I've ever seen and I've ever been a part of. Well, that's the reason why I think so many of us love movies or especially why I love movies is the power to tell so many different stories uh, and diverse stories, and which leads me to a, a more serious question. I feel like the last few years that there's been more representation across the board um, out of Hollywood and just in general, but I'm curious how you see it and if you agree with that or what you'd like to say. Yeah, I mean, I think this year at TIFF, it's a stellar lineup for trans women in particular. We have H. Alberto, Alberto we have a uh, Vera Drew, we have our film, and I think the, the dolls are really showing up and showing out, which is very exciting. That being said, I still think we have a lot of work to do. Um, just based off of like the conversations I was having when I was talking to the financiers for this project, we had to walk away with a, from a lot of great financiers just because they were asking questions like, well, how do we know she's trans? And why don't we bring her transness more to the front of the story? And why don't we make that more of like a talking point in the film? And, and even things like age, they were like, let's age down Ren, because no one wants to see a film about a 25 year old, but, but a film about an 18 year old, that's bankable. And, and so I just feel like there's all these different layers of misogyny, trans misogyny, um, and just like our preconceived notions of like what a trans story is, and we're still kind of uh, coming up against that wall. That being said, all the financiers who ultimately 
did sign on to this project came on with just like a yes, let's do it. No notes. Let's go for it. Um, so I'd like to see more financiers like that. I think it makes the difference. Um, and I think the dolls are having a moment. Uh, I'm very excited for Trace Lissette, who just premiered Monica in Venice. Uh, so we are we're making waves. We are making waves. And I'm really proud of us. Would you like to add anything? Well, there's no pressure here. I'm just... I'll just add that um, it has been amazing to work on set because um, I think we get a lot of representation in front of the camera when it comes to trans women, especially. Um, but it's still pr it's pretty rare to see trans women being able to tell their own stories the way that Louise can. Um, and she's just done an amazing effort at bringing so many trans women on set behind the camera in every department, really making sure that trans people are given the opportunity so that they can tell their stories. I think that's the next step. Representation is great, but when we can represent ourselves, the stories are so much more authentic and people can connect them even more. And I think that did help in the end with your performance. A hundred percent. Because when you woke up in the morning, there was a trans girl getting you dressed. When you uh -huh. sat in the makeup chair, there was a trans girl doing her makeup. Mm -hmm. There was a trans girl like working behind the camera. There was constantly a trans presence on set in every single department. And I think it translates. Yeah. You d I don't have to build up that defense mechanism that you sometimes do have to build up as a trans woman. And so that shows in the performance, I think. I hope. <laughs> Uh, I'm obsessed with talking about the editing process because ultimately that's where it all comes together. So I'm curious what you learned from any friends and family screenings that impacted the finished film. That's a good question. I think I learned that audiences are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Um, there was a lot more exposition, I think, in my original script. And with every uh, pass that we made um, after showing it to an audience they were always like you can it was just so clear of like what we could get rid of and i think it just both helped us tighten the the film and it also i think allows for the audience to be drawn in more because all of a sudden what now they have to do is they have to start filling in the blanks with their own experiences um and i think it 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 allows for that experience that cinematic experience that you want when you go into the cinema of just being able to like both see someone else's life, but also see your life in them. Um, so that's kind of what I learned in terms of uh, showing the film to audiences and friends and family and yeah. Uh, for all three of you, uh, I would imagine the shoot, you're looking at the shooting schedule and what you have to do each day. And there must've been one day on the shoot where you were like, yet yeah, it's circled. Like this is gonna be a tougher day you know, I got to emotionally get ready or there's a lot of camera stuff or whatever it may be. So for each of you, what was that day on this shoot that you had circled and were maybe a little more nervous or excited? For me, I was really nervous to film the bathtub scene just because it's a very vulnerable space for a human being to strip down all the things that hide myself, like clothes and, and everything. So whenever I could strip that away, and I was just in a bathtub with Carmen, that ended up being my favorite scene that I have ever filmed in my life because when you're in such a vulnerable state and you have somebody else to like put all of your energy there and to protect you and make you feel safe, like I, I just felt so loved that day and I felt like it was so special and how it turned out and I'm, I'm just, I'm so, proud of that scene but i was terrified to do it the day but it's my favorite scene um there's a lot of those scenes that i had to circle um but I, i'm gonna pick out um the pool scene i think for me was a big one um yeah I, it's it's always nerve-wracking um again as a trans woman kind of exposing yourself um and, and, and in that scene, you really see something that a lot of trans women only experience behind closed doors. Um, so I was nervous about showing that to the world and how I show that to the world. Um, but it was, um, I said yesterday at the screening, it, it's my favorite scene to watch, I think, now. I feel like I have an A and a B. The A is the island day. That was like our longest day by far. Um, just because we only had 19 days, we really had to like 
condense everything and we only had one day to shoot all of that footage and it's quite a lot of uh, material to get through. So it was an 18 hour day and it was very scary, but we got through it. The crew was amazing. I mean, um, it was a very stressful shoot, but not once did they ever take out their stress on the project or me. It was kind of something that we bonded over and there was a lot of camaraderie on set and very thankful uh, for that group of people. And then the B to that question is uh, something that I wasn't so worried about. And then the weather turned on us like literally a couple hours before the shoot. Um, and it was our one overnight shoot. It's the scene where Ren and Sienna go to the parking lot with Lonnie. And uh, the scene was supposed to be a hot, sticky, sweltering summer night. And uh, obviously it's not that because it's pouring almost the entire scene. And we were not prepared for that. And uh, it was a really uh, make it work moment. But I think we made it work. And in the end, like now I look at that scene and I'm like, oh, that's exactly how it had to be shot there's something about the rain that just adds this slick um i don't know like scariness this mm -hmm. this like dread almost that our little indie budget would never have been able to reproduce so well, but that's one of the that's one of the things that really struck me about the film which is that like that scene as i'm watching it i am like w when's the shoe dropping when like and then because i've been you know movies have built me up to expect that. And that's one of the reasons why I found your film so refreshing and just, I, I really enjoyed it because it just tells a different kind of story. Um, anyway, on that note, I'm just gonna say congratulations um, on making a, such a successful uh, first feature. And uh, thank you so much for coming in our TIFF studio. And I hope that TIFF is a wonderful experience for all of you. Yeah, it's been good. And thank you for such lovely questions. It was yes. really nice chatting. Thank I, you, Steve. I swear I've done this once before. And this <laughs> is my second interview. I'm joking around. <laughs> Listen, um, uh, I'm. thank you so much for coming in.